Hello, racing fans. I'm Charlotte McBride, and this week I'm going to give you three great reasons as to why you need to watch this next half hour. Number one, we've got racing's hottest, fastest action you will see on any track anywhere in America. Number two, watching this show could make you a little wealthier. That's because Susan's going to tell you which horses to pick, and she's rarely wrong, so that's pretty much money in your pocket. And number three, we've got the hottest horse casters on the tube. So if those three reasons didn't snag you, these headlines definitely will. Coming up in this next half hour, we've got one heck of a race from right here at Chester, the half-million-dollar Ben Franklin final. And then we're heading up the turnpike to the Poconos, where there was a very unique finish to a riveting race. And one of our younger drivers wins the biggest race of his life in the great state of Indiana. I'll have that story, plus we'll catch the Titan Cup from the Meadowlands. Stay in your seat, don't move a muscle, because racing's fastest paced half hour is coming up right now on Comcast Sportsnet. Oh, they go. Explosive matter wins the Colonial easily. Underway. Starts fast left by Gary Brent Messenger into the early. Fifteen five and five is more the half time. Just over three to go. That's the top of the stretch. Hi everyone and welcome to PA Harness Week. This is Harness Racing's fastest paced half hour and we got the best of the best and we have it in a tiny little package and we fit it into a half hour and of course it is safety sealed for the protection of you and your loved ones. Hi everyone, I'm Steve Ross. I am a man, yes I am and I can't help but love you so. And my partner to my right is the lovely Heather Moffat. And I'm who is woman, woman, hear her roar, and numbers too big to ignore. That was me. I blanked on what that was. The old Helen Reddy song from when I was three years old. Anyway, we got a good show for you this week. The Benjamin Franklin for the greatest older horses around was contested right here at Harris Chester. Mm -hmm. How much money was on the line? A half a million bucks. Funny you should ask. And with all the info on that one, big race. Here's Heather. Okay, in here, we have got number two, We Will See. He is the favorite with Ron Pierce. Now, Ronnie just became this horse's regular driver, and they have got some major chemistry, let me tell you. EHarmony.com stuff? He has something Match. like that. Chemi Chemistry.com. <laughs> All right, Better Sweet has the rail. Now, he's been one of those horses this year that I don't care what track he's at or who's driving him, you got to put him in the number somewhere. And then there's number eight, Won the West. He's been like wider, hunting down the Clinton brothers, okay? His last two races, he's just been awesome. But he is not the favorite in here. Let's see if the public has this one right. Off of the Franklin, it was a perfect start. Better sweet and we will see show speed up the near side. Arakash Hanover is prominently placed. Foiled again left, but has dropped back into midfield. Overtaken for the fourth spot by one the West. And Better Sweet peels off to a three and a half length lead. We will see his second. Arakash Hanover is third. A length and a half more to one the West, who is an unhurried fourth. Six and a half off the pace. Foiled again a length and a half behind him, while two and a half in front of Atokia. The back markers are Vintage Master and Ideal Matters. 13 lengths from front to back. And Better Sweet ripped through a 25 and 4 first quarter. Passed us the first time. Better Sweet leads by just a length and a half. We will see his close the pocket. And Brian Sears is trying to slow the pace just a bit. One the West will have to go at first over. He's within two lengths of the lead and gaining steadily. Arakash Hanover's locked in, foiled again as second over, carried to within three lengths of the lead by his stablemate. Vintage Master is third over with four and a half to make up wide of a Tokia. An ideal matters trail six and a half off the lead of Better Sweet. The half 54 and two. Three eighths to go in the fifth edition of the Ben Franklin and Better Sweet is being nudged along by One the West, who's up within three quarters of a leg. We will see his lock in the box, foiled again in a good striking spot, but he'll have to make up two and a half lengths in the final quarter mile. Eric Cash Hanover needs racing room. Vintage Master not doing enough thus far. He's got four lengths to race and he'll have to move wide right now. Ideal Matters is behind excess cover. A joint last with a Tokyo six off the leaders. Three quarters in one, 21 and one. They cut the corner and Better Sweets trying to take them all the way. Won the West, giving chase on the outside. We will see he's cut loose up the open stretch and here's We Will See to take over. Over in the final yards. We will see prevails in 48 and 4. Did you say the Clanton brothers? There's a wider. Well, you are older than you look. 
I said I was the old one here. Go figure, right? I've only seen the movies. I, I wasn't see. actually there. All right. So nobody leaves from the outside, okay? So there is better sweep. He's got the rail. He ends up leaving, and then we will see who had the two hole. Just gets a perfect trip behind better sweep. Comes up the passing lane. Wins in 148.4, equaling his lifetime best. Arakashi Hanover was third. Now, as you can see in the race, won the West, got a tough trip. He was first up, and he ended up being a fifth in that one. We did not get a chance to talk to Benjamin Franklin himself, although he was around at Harris Chester that day, hanging out with fans and getting a little posing done in the winner's circle uh, for that big race of his. But we did talk to Hall of Fame driver Ronnie Pierce. Ron, tell us about the mile with we will see in the Ben Franklin half a million dollar race. And you got the two post uh, that worked to your advantage, obviously? Yeah, it sure, sure did. Um, it was the most competitive field of free for allers I've ever seen in my life. Uh, I mean, there were seven different horses that could have won that race. Um, were you surprised that you were the chalk? Yeah, I was a little bit. Uh -huh, because, you know, there's some more horses. There were some more horses in there. And uh, for some reason, you know, uh, the edge went to me. Uh, I wasn't the overwhelming favorite, but uh, but yeah, he, he was the public's favorite. Before the race, when he stepped out on the track, did you feel he had a, you were sitting on a big mile with him or what? Well, I wasn't sure because I, he, he went an extremely rough trip the week before. Um, but, it, you know, he took a couple steps on the track, and I, I seen Sammy did a great job getting ready for this race, and I felt pretty confident that he was going to give me a big, big effort. Thank you, Ron. Time now to go up to Mohegan Sun of Pocono Downs on Saturday night. The 10th race was a biggie, 60000 bucks on the line. I'm still trying to reconcile, wrap my brain around the fact that Pocono's got races for sixty, seventy grand that aren't stakes, overnight races. It's like nuts. Okay, listen to this field. Number three, Golden Receiver with Ant Knapp went off at seven to five. Number six, Mac Raider with Bro Georgie Knapp was five to two. And number four, Drop Red with Larry Stahlbaum was the nine to two third betting choice. And with the call, here's Jim Bavilia. Underway in the feature and Golden Receiver really gunning out of there early. Wasting no time to take over by a length and a half. Outside Mac Raider now moving up quickly second. He's not stopping. He's going to try to go to the front with Drop Red a close third. Following that fourth now transcending after that gallant Yankee fifth. Then comes Valentino. Cinderella guy at the back. And Mac Raider with that one big brush takes over the lead now. Gets clear at the quarter. 26 and 1. Mac Raider had a big mile earlier here this season. He's back again trying to do damage up top. Golden Receiver has been close of late against some tough competition. The 7-5 favorite with the pocket trip. Drop Red moving up after back-to-back -back impressive wins. There goes Stahlbaum first over, pushing the button there. Gallant Yankee follows the cover fourth. Transcending stays in fifth. Also in the outer flow now, Valentino and Cinderella Guy at the back. They come to the half mile, 54-4, 28-3 second panel. Scorching fractions up top it's Mac Raider by about a half length coming after him on the outside there is drop red great trip for golden receiver in the pocket third gallant Yankee second over in striking position fourth transcending staying in saving ground then comes Valentino Cinderella guy still there at the back Mac Raider clinging to that lead it's down to a long neck at the three-quarter pole 121 and four 27 even third panel it's still Mac Raider now about a half out in front drop red still coming Coming after him, Gallant Yankee now wheels out three wide, and Golden Receiver still looming there in the pocket. Top of the stretch, Mac Raider by about a length and a half. Golden Receiver now out of the pocket. The two brothers going to do battle here in the open. Mac Raider and Golden Receiver's gaining on him. It's tight. It's Golden Receiver. All you got to know is the Nap Bros finished one two. Coo -coo -coo -choo. Golden Receiver got to the wire first in 149 and 1. Just a neck before the pace setter, Mac Raider, number one transcending off at 9 to 1 with Mac McCallie was third. And don't you dare think about going anyplace when we come back. Action of plenty right here from Harris Chester. Look away. Her new release is going to push the pace, and now he was going to set the pace. Welcome, good old Sunday. No love when you don't come. Welcome, Sunday. 